It is one hour and 40 minutes before sunset on the steppe of South Central Kazakhstan as the next chapter of human spaceflight for the International Space Station begins. And you are looking live at Launch Pad 6, Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready for launch, to send an American astronaut, a Roscosmos cosmonaut, and a spaceflight participant from Belarus into orbit on a quick two-orbit journey to reach their destination, the International Space Station. Good morning from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. Countdown clocks are ticking backward for the launch of the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft atop its Soyuz booster at 8.21 and 18 seconds a.m. Central Time, 9.21 and 18 <coughs> seconds a.m. Eastern Time, 6.21 and 18 seconds p.m. at the launch site in Baikonur. Earlier today, the Soyuz booster was fueled for launch by engineers in Baikonur, a process that was completed a few hours ago. The launch control team in Baikonur reports all systems are go for launch, no issues being worked as the countdown enters its final phase. The temperature at this hour in Baikonur is in the mid-40s Fahrenheit, overcast skies, 
We probably won't see the rocket in the ground camera field of view for very long after liftoff. We should be getting uh, views of the crew inside uh, the descent module cabin, however, as well as views from the upper stage camera on the Soyuz booster as the Soyuz heads uphill. Here in Mission Control, the team is watching over the Expedition 70 crew and station systems on the International Space Station. A shift handover about to get underway. They are preparing to support the arrival of Soyuz MS-25 later today. The station population will increase temporarily from 7 to 10 with the addition of NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson and her crewmates Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya, the first Belarusian to fly in space. The crew is all set to begin a flight of just over three hours in duration to the International Space Station with docking scheduled at 11.39 a.m. Central Time to the Prashal node module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Once the hatches are opened between the newly arrived Soyuz and the station, Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya will be greeted by Station Commander Ali Kononenko of Roscosmos, and his crewmates, Roscosmos cosmonauts Nikolai Chub and Alexander Grabenkin, and NASA astronauts Laurel O'Hara, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, and Jeanette Epps. After 12 days on board to enable Vasilevskaya to conduct experiments on behalf of Belarus researchers, Novitsky, Vasilevskaya, and O'Hara will depart in the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft on April 2nd, heading for a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Dyson will remain on board the station through September, returning home at that time with Kononenko and Chub on Soyuz MS-25. Dyson will have spent six months in orbit on this, her third flight into space, while Kononenko and Chub will come home after completing a full year on orbit. As a footnote, Kononenko, who's the chief of the cosmonaut corps, has already spent more days in space than any other human he will pass 1,000 days in space on June 4th on this, his fifth space flight. Dyson's launch today mirrors that of Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grabenkin, who launched to the station as part of the SpaceX Crew-8 Dragon crew earlier this month, providing a reciprocal crew exchange capability to maintain safe and continuous space station operations. You see uh, the view of Soyuz MS-25 on the launch pad, countdown clocks ticking backward, uh, approaching the T-minus 56-minute mark. We'll talk more about uh, the orbital mechanics of this two-orbit rendezvous a short time from now. Here in Mission Control in Houston, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers about to take a shift handover. They will be led today by Flight Director Diane Daly, along with Flight Director Nicole McElroy, on console is the CAPCOM, or spacecraft communicator, who will be talking to the Expedition 70 crew aboard the station, is Costa Mavridis, and veteran astronaut Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency, who is a Soyuz veteran. Across the Atlantic, on the outskirts of Moscow, Mission Control in Moscow in the International Space Station Flight Control Room is at the ready. They're at their consoles, as you, as you can see from this live view from a balcony camera. They will be taking over control of the flight of Soyuz MS-25 to the space station as soon as the Soyuz separates from the upper stage of the Soyuz booster about 8 minutes and 46 seconds after liftoff. Up until that point, uh, control and uh, the data processing from the Soyuz will be in the hands of the launch control engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. We're back now with a live view of the Soyuz MS-25 on the launch pad in Baikonur. Again, liftoff scheduled for 8.21 and 18 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.21 and 18 seconds p.m. in Baikonur, just 39 minutes before sunset in the Central Asian Desert. The countdown is proceeding on schedule. No issues being reported from engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. Atop the Soyuz 2.1A booster strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz are NASA's Tracy Dyson, Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky, and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya. Novitsky, as Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of the descent module, 
flanked to his right by Tracy Dyson, serving today as board engineer number one. And to Novitsky's left is Vasilevskaya, serving as board engineer number two. This will be Vasilevskaya's first flight into space, Dyson's third, as we mentioned earlier. This is Novitsky's fourth flight into space, having already accrued 531 days of spaceflight experience. Ready? And as you can see, as you can hear, the traditional uh, pre-flight music being radioed from the blockhouse in Baikonur up to the crew. These are crew selections, basically to relax them in the final hour or so of a countdown toward a Soyuz launch to the International Space Station. At this moment, the countdown stands at T-minus 53 minutes, 40 seconds and counting for the launch of the Soyuz MS-25 crew to the International Space Station. Tracy Dyson's launch today marks her third visit to the station, having first flown on the STS-118 mission of the Space Shuttle Endeavour in 2007, then on a Soyuz mission in 2010 as part of the Expedition 23 and 24 crews. With everything proceeding in good shape toward launch, let's take a moment to learn more about Tracy Dyson and her road to becoming an astronaut. I think I first got interested working with tools uh, when I started going on job sites with my dad. When I was really young, my dad was an electrician, turned master electrician, and then electrical contractor, and finally being a business owner, owning his own electrical contracting company. I started off just going to jobs with him and hanging out to actually getting tools put in my hands and uh, working alongside of my dad. And I grew up that way all the way until I was about 25 years old, but started out when I was about seven. When I started off with my dad, actually, you know, put my hands on tools and tools on, on materials, I was getting paid in Winchell's Donuts because those were the stores that we were remodeling back in Southern California. That was such a critical part of, of my whole life. I mean, I can't tell you how, how meaningful it was to get paid with donuts. I mean, I had seven on a table and it was like, I didn't even know which one to eat first. As I started to go work for my father more and more, I got older and older. Uh, donuts quite, weren't quite cutting it. Plus, I was, you know, an athlete and <laughs> realizing that diet was a little bit more important to me. So uh, the donuts t turned into dough. And uh, though I was uh, the last to get paid, um, which I didn't mind, uh, Dad started to give me a little bit more of a of a wage. And uh, when I was in high school, and I was a little bit more coordinated and, and uh, had a, a number of years of following my dad on the job, he would then send me out on service calls. So um, he could send me out and I would uh, go take care of it. So by the time I was in college, um, I was pretty well um, independent in that I could troubleshoot problems that uh, most um, commercial buildings uh, encountered from J boxes to receptacles to panels, sub panels, etc. That's the kind of wiring that I did. So I was one of his most reliable employees. And so, because um, when I came home, I came home to dad. But I also, I love my dad. I love my, my dad's company and what it stood for. And he was my best teacher. Watching my dad uh, go on a job site and I knew we had the blueprints and we'd look at these and we'd look at the walls and there'd be a barrier in the way that, like a, like a beam that we weren't expecting. And my dad would look at it and um, I'd be like, how are you gonna fix it, dad? He said, let me think about it. And it wasn't long before he came up with a solution. So I learned a lot of courage watching my dad and I watched him, I watched him work through it and I helped him. I, I held the tool, I climbed up in the attic, I did whatever he needed to, um, to get the job done. So just a, I, um, it's endless, the things that I learned. A lot of what I did working for my father, I utilized on board the space station because you're at a place that um, things break all the time and you don't always have what you need. And sometimes you have to get um, pretty clever with what you have to fix things. And um, one of the times when I really used the, the, the training that I received from my father is uh, when uh, we had a pump fail on board the space station and I had to go do an EVA to fix it. One of two ammonia pumps external to the space station failed. 
So we were down a single cooling channel, and there's only two cooling channels. It's like a radiator in your car. And when the radiator goes down, there's nothing to cool your engine. It was just a miraculous event on board that required the efforts of everybody who's got a hand in the space station. So from uh, working the tools to working the teamwork, it was one of the most gratifying things. And there was an electrical connector that I had to remove on the failed pump that was really stiff. And uh, I had to use uh, an alternate method of getting the connector off. And once I did, I got kudos from my crewmate, Doug Wheelock. He's way to go, TC. And I said, my dad would be proud. Ah, got it. <laughs> yeah, TC. My dad would be proud. And I asked my dad later, did you hear dad? I gave you a shout out. And he acted all cool. He was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm from space, dad. <laughs> There's so much I could talk about with that spacewalk, but um, I did feel like I had taken all of my skills as a construction worker and really put them to work uh, during that series. Got this when I was seven. I only had one pouch with a few electrician hand tools, but as I got older and more responsible and a little better, my tool belt grew and I needed suspenders, just like my dad's. Here it is, instant electrician. You wanna know what's in it? Got my assortment of uh, screwdrivers, so we always have um, slotted. I got my uh, standard Phillips, this is really super important. I've got my long slot. It's got electrical tape around it so that I don't zap myself in case, uh, you know, I would get into a box that I didn't create, somebody else did, and I get shocked. So I got my uh, quarter inch driver, I know, because it's got a yellow dot. I got my needle nose, that's super important. And then I got my channel locks. And then I got my awl. I really need that because combination with my hammer, that's how I uh, make holes in the wall. All right, that's cool. Love this stuff. Then I got my. Uh, my clients are on the job, they're known as the linemans because you, you can pull wire with them and you can twist wire with them, you can cut wire with them, but uh, we called them clients because it was the first client tool that I ever had. No electrician is caught without their wire strippers. You've got grooves for different size wires. When I was a little girl learning how to do this, I had just one size and I had to make it work. And then I got older and, and a little bit more savvy and so I graduated to this one. Love it. Oh, super important. This is not called a level. This is called a torpedo. All right. This is my oldest tool and it's um, maybe to you called a voltmeter, but to an electrician, a sparky they call us, uh, it's called the wiggy. Once you uh, apply the ends to live wires, it, it acts wiggy. So um, I also have electrical tape. Walls are made out of aluminum studs. We've got our tin snips here. And then I got my keyhole saw. That's about it. This tool belt, every time I pull it out, and I, I use it either when I'm working at the house or I'm working at the church or I'm working on somebody else's house just fixing a problem that they have. I think, I think about my dad, I think about my mom and what the two of them allowed me to do and a skill that seemed to be um, just part of my upbringing has been a part of my life and my career every step of the way. And um, it's just become a lot more than just a, a belt that holds tools. I'm Tracy Dyson, and I'm a NASA astronaut. As you just saw, Tracy Dyson has unique and special talents that she brought to NASA throughout the years. In fact, NASA believes everyone has a special talent they can bring to the astronaut corps. That's why NASA is excited to announce that the agency is taking applications for the next class of NASA astronaut candidates that will train to travel to low Earth orbit, the moon, and beyond. If you think you have what it takes, the agency is accepting applications until April 2nd. To learn more, go to nasa.gov slash astronauts. If you are just joining us, you're looking live at the Soyuz MS-25 on the launch pad at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Central Asian Desert, where we are 44 minutes and 45 seconds away from the launch of Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya. 
Liftoff is scheduled for 8.21 and 18 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.21 and 18 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. The countdown is proceeding on schedule with no issues being reported from launch engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. This crew flew to the Baikonur Cosmodrome from their training base at Star City, Russia on March 6th for final pre-launch training and inspections of their Soyuz spacecraft. With the crew in Baikonur completing their training template, the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft was encapsulated into the upper stage of the Soyuz booster in the integration building late last week. After the three stages of the Soyuz 2.1A booster were mated together, the Soyuz rocket began its trek to the launch pad shortly after sunrise on Monday. It was hauled to the pad horizontally on a rail car in a process that took about 30 minutes to complete. And as you can see, once at the pad, the Soyuz was raised hydraulically to its vertical position for final pre-launch preparations. And back live now, we're watching countdown clocks ticking backward for the launch of this next crew to the International Space Station just 43 minutes and 22 seconds from now. Out on that launch pad at Site 31 of the Cosmodrome, the Soyuz booster is poised for launch, fully fueled with kerosene and liquid oxygen as the propellant. The Soyuz 2.1A is the ticket to ride for crews that launch to the International Space Station from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Let's take a moment to take a closer look at this Soyuz booster. It's 162 feet tall, weighs about 640,000 pounds, and consists of the Soyuz spacecraft inside a protective shroud at the top and the three-stage Soyuz 2.1A booster below. The first stage has four liquid engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each will burn for one minute and 58 seconds before they drop away. The core engine of the first stage also serves as the second stage and continues to burn until 4 minutes and 57 seconds into the flight. The third stage has a single engine that will ignite before the separation of the second stage, helping to push it away safely. It will burn until the 8 minutes and 46 seconds mark of the flight, and at that point the Soyuz spacecraft will separate from the third stage, having arrived at its preliminary orbit. Back live now, T minus 42 minutes and counting. You're looking live at the Soyuz MS-25. Uh, it is in, enveloped in the uh, gantry arms that should be spreading away about uh, six or seven minutes from now. They will uh, retract, exposing the Soyuz rocket. On board, uh, Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander in the center seat of the uh, Soyuz descent module at the top of this three-stage Soyuz rocket. To his right is NASA's Tracy Dyson. To his left, a Belarus spaceflight participant, Marina Vasilevskaya. The three sections of the uh, spacecraft, the Soyuz spacecraft, are familiar to those who have watched previous missions to the International Space Station. While we have a moment, let's take a look at this Russian transport vehicle. The whole Soyuz spacecraft is 24 and a half feet long with an overall volume of 301 cubic feet and comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats for the crew members during launch, entry, and landing, and contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight. It also houses life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachute and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown as the spacecraft lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on the module, which are used to control the spacecraft's orientation, or attitude, during the descent until parachute deployment. The descent module also contains a guidance navigation and control system used to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. This descent module is 7.3 feet long with a diameter of 7.1 feet and a habitable volume of 124 cubic feet. It is the only portion of the Soyuz that survives the return to Earth. The orbital module at the top is 9.8 feet long. It connects to the descent module via pressurized hatch. This is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around following launch during the flight to the space station. It has a docking mechanism, hatch, and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock with the space station, and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the station for docking. 
There is also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of failure of the rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control thrusters, avionics, and communication and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays are folded against the body of the propulsion module, which, along with the orbital module, separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn. The solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the unlikely event the crew needs to leave the station unexpectedly. At the uh, T minus 38 minute 50 second mark in the countdown, we're back now with a live view of the Soyuz MS 25 on the launch pad in Baikonur. Liftoff schedule for 8.21 and 18 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.21 and 18 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. As we mentioned uh, before, atop that uh, booster strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz are NASA's Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos, and spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus. As mentioned earlier, Novitsky, as Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of Soyuz MS-25. Dyson seated to his right, Vasilevskaya seated to his left. On board the International Space Station, uh, the seven-member crew, led by Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos, the station commander, is now flying 262 miles over the Earth just passing to the east of Argentina, about to begin a southwest and northeasterly swing across the South Atlantic Ocean. Expedition 70, uh, the seven-member crew, is about to make a transition to Expedition 71. The Expedition 71 crew, or actually the increment itself, will start at undocking of the Soyuz MS-24 on April 2nd, that will bring home Novitsky, Vasilevskaya, and NASA's Laurel O'Hara, who will be completing 200 days in space. The current crew on board is Kononenko, Nikolai Chub, Alexander Grabenkin of Roscosmos, NASA astronauts Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Laurel O'Hara. And again, O'Hara is poised to come home 12 days from now on the Soyuz MS-24, landing uh, in Kazakhstan, a parachute-assisted landing, with Novitsky and Vasilevskaya, who are basically a taxi crew. Vasilevskaya will be on board to conduct experiments on behalf of Belarus researchers for the next 12 days. The unintelligible readiness is announced. We are about eight and a half minutes away from uh, what we expect and hope will be a 15-minute package of video that uh, is being uh, compiled right now in Baikonur of launch day activities. So we'll be standing by for that. Again, the countdown is proceeding flawlessly. No issues being reported. Uh, the uh, Russian State Commission and the Fueling and Tanking Commission met uh, several hours ago and gave approval to fuel up uh, the Soyuz uh, 2.1A booster, which is now loaded with kerosene and liquid oxygen uh, for the uh, ride to orbit. The ascent milestones that will reel off once we lift off uh, the launch pad in Baikonur will be as follows. One minute and 53 seconds after launch, the escape tower at the top of the rocket will be jettisoned, followed five seconds later at the one minute 58 second mark by first stage separation of uh, the first stage engines and the strap-on liquid fuel boosters. The second stage will ignite and fire for about uh, two minutes and 39 seconds. At the T plus two minute 33 second mark, uh, we'll have the launch shroud jettisoned that will expose uh, the windows on the Soyuz descent module so that uh, the crew can actually see their climb to orbit outside the windows. Second stage shutdown will come at the plus four minute 37 second mark into the ascent. The uh, second stage shutdown and separation will occur in rapid fire succession. The third stage lower skirt will be jettisoned and the third stage will ignite and burn for about four minutes in duration. The third stage shutdown will uh, be at the 8 minute 46 second mark into the mission, followed three seconds later by third stage separation. 
You're currently seeing the gantry arms beginning to move away from the side of the rocket. I'll talk about the two umbilicals that are buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz rocket here in a moment. Right after third stage separation, the command will be given uh, for the uh, deployment of the Soyuz solar arrays and its navigational antennas and the pursuit of uh, the International Space Station will be on for Novitsky, Dyson and Vasilevskaya. Again, what you're hearing is uh, music being played uh, up to the crew who are strapped into their seats uh, in the uh, descent module of the uh, Soyuz vehicle. That is uh, traditional music. Uh, each crew member has a selection of music that is played up from the blockhouse in Baikonur to uh, help the crew relax uh, during the final hour or so of the countdown, which, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, stands at the T-minus 33-minute mark until liftoff. The two umbilicals uh, that are basically buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz, the first of which will retract at about the T-minus 30-second mark. The second umbilical will re retract at about the T-minus 15-second mark. That will initiate uh, the engine sequence start. The engines and turbo pumps will come up to flight speed, basically full throttle. The hold-down arms right at the base of the rocket will retract and the Soyuz will lift off. A roll pitch and yaw program will be initiated as uh, the Soyuz clears the tower there in Baikonur. As, a, as you can see, it's solid overcast today. Temperatures are somewhat mild for this time of year. They're in the mid-40s right now as uh, we approach sunset at the launch site. Because this is a uh, two-orbit rendezvous, there's a phase angle, as it, as it is called, of about 15 degrees, a very narrow corridor in which the Soyuz will ease into. You can think of it as a, driving your car onto the on-ramp of a freeway. You have to hit the right lane in order to get into the right uh, orientation for the car to reach its destination. That 15-degree phase angle will put the Soyuz into the right uh, attitude and orientation to uh, meet the International Space Station after about uh, three hours of travel. A series of delta velocity or DV burns will be conducted first to raise the altitude of the uh, Soyuz to match that of the International Space Station and then to refine its path to the International Space Station for the terminal phase of rendezvous. We will move into what is called automated rendezvous operations at about 9 a.m. Central Time this morning. That uh, will lead to the activation of the CORE's automated rendezvous system on both the Soyuz side as well as uh, on the International Space Station's side of the uh, Russian segment of the station. The uh, Soyuz will make its way towards uh, the neighborhood of the station and begin a fly around of about 54 degrees of fly around at about 11.17 a.m. Central Time this morning. That will orient the forward docking probe on the Soyuz uh, to a precise orientation and alignment for the Prashal node module, which is attached to the multipurpose laboratory module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Our coverage uh, today is in three parts on NASA television. Once we get the crew safely on orbit following launch, we will take a break and then return at 10.30 a.m. Central Time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time for rendezvous and docking coverage with docking scheduled at 11.39 a.m. Central, 12.39 p.m. Eastern Time. Once the hooks are closed to form a hard mate between the Soyuz and the station, there will be a series of leak checks between the Soyuz and the, the crew on board the International Space Station to make sure we have a tight seal uh, between uh, the two vehicles. 
before the process of uh, pressurizing the vestibule between Pershal and the station is conducted. We will be back on the air then at 1.50 p.m. Central Time, 2.50 p.m. Eastern Time for the hatch opening and the welcoming remarks as Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya arrive on board the complex to join the Expedition 70 crew. And the day doesn't end there. Down at the Kennedy Space Center and the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket is being poised for launch later today. The weather is expected to be about 90% uh, go for the launch of the uh, 30th commercial resupply mission by SpaceX to deliver some three tons of supplies and science experiments to the International Space Station. So the second half of our daily doubleheader today, now that the baseball season is underway, will begin at 3.35 p.m. Central Time, 4.35 p.m. Eastern Time, leading to a launch of the Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon cargo craft from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's Pad 40. That uh, will take place at 3.55 p.m. Central, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time. The launch complex is ready, 30 minutes. The servicing towers have been separated into the horizontal position. Copy your report and your go. And here's our B-roll today. Launch day for the three crew members began uh, to the sound of traditional farewell music as they departed the Cosmonaut Hotel and boarded a bus for a 40-minute ride to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. There's the backup crew along with NASA's Don Pettit. They and their flight surgeons boarded two buses in the parking lot of the Cosmonaut Hotel for that ride out to the Cosmodrome. Say some good words. We love you guys. We love you guys. Go, Russia. Go, Belarus. Go, USA. We are waiting for you to return. May everything go nominally. Best of luck to everyone. Best of luck. We are all friends. And of course, with the well-wishers uh, bidding farewell to the crew, the buses left for that 40-minute ride out to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. After arriving at the integration building, each of the crew members underwent uh, final medical exams and they suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits. And as you can see, uh, the crew members moved to a mock-up of a Soyuz spacecraft seat, allowing technicians to conduct pressure checks, ensuring that the suits were free of any leaks. Good view of Tracy Dyson there, having her suit undergo its pressure check. 
Novitsky on the left, Vasilevskaya on the right. usual, separated by a pane of glass to maintain quarantine, all of the family members and uh, invited guests waving to the crew as they underwent their pressure checks. Next up for the pressure check on her suit, Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus, flying under an intergovernmental agreement between Roscosmos and Belarus. And her 12-day mission on the International Space Station uh, will involve her conducting experiments for Belarus researchers. Okay, well. Okay, how was it? What? I said, how was it? It was good. I passed. No, I'm fit check, ready to go. I'm fit check, and I'm <laughs> I have my own personal photographer. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah. I think the fact they let me out of this seat means that I passed my late check. There you go. You're all set. Yeah. Very good. Are you ready? I'm ready. Always ready. You're always ready. <laughs> How about the rest of it? You ready? Yeah. Want to get a thumbs up from the rest of you? Okay. <laughs> you want to see some time? Dyson uh, talking to her husband, uh, there's the two members of the backup crew, Anastasia Lenkova and Ivan Wagner. Bring the mic a little closer. I've got a little few layers on my ears that I can't hear. You want me to do that all over again, this being so? No, uh, just, no I, can, I can. We love you. I can live free. <laughs> love, you. <laughs> love you too. Thank you for being here. <laughs> You've worked so hard for this day, Tracy, and we're just so proud of you and your whole crew and everything that you do for international cooperation aboard our space station and keeping the human presence going and the exploration. You're Don't taking us cry. No, no, <laughs> you're taking us all with you, and you know that. Thank you. Love you too. Trisha Mack, who was the director of human spaceflight in Russia for several years. This is coming up. Oh, after this. All right. Cool. I think after this. Mm -hmm. It's a little crowded in there. <laughs> Novitsky about to embark on the fourth flight into space in his career, already having logged 531 days in space. Just make sure you're okay. <laughs> okay, I can do that. I've got two, two really good friends flying with me that are going to make sure of that. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. So Thanks for being that. here, Norm. So proud of you. Thank you. The whole team is so <laughs> Marina, hello. It's a big honor for me and a big responsibility to be in this unbelievable mission. This is our national project. It's such a big honor. I'm so proud to represent our republic. I am so proud that we have this project. Dear daughter, all of Belarus is supporting you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you, Lukashenko, for organizing this project, for creating it. 
So many words have already been said, so many good words. I am so glad that we're in a great mood. We woke up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to go. And we are with you in spirit. We are holding you in our thoughts. We'll be in touch. We'll be talking in the morning, in the evening. We are absolutely certain that everything will be good. We are absolutely with you all the way. Thank you so much. We'll be back and we'll see each other soon. We'll be waiting for you. Thank you. And last up, uh, following his uh, suit leak check, Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander. Everything will be good. Everything will be good. We want to wish you a good flight, a great expedition. I hope that you will be able to perform all of the tasks that have been said before you and despite all the turbulence we maintain our international space collaboration and we are aiming to continuing our international collaboration into the future including up and including 2028. Please uh, be sure to keep an eye on Oleg, uh, Marina. Make sure that he presses all the right buttons. Oh, you got it. On behalf of the head of our government, the president, and everyone in the leadership, I want to send you their hellos, their support from the government of Belarus. We wish you a most successful flight and we are so excited to see you back here on earth when you come back support those who are there on board you are arriving there for a short time i'll let you know how it goes uh don't make too much of a mess but uh please support the crew members that are there for a long time all the best of luck to you and come back safely Thank you so much. Thank you. Crew members uh, then left the Site-254 integration building, allowing uh, Novitsky, the Soyuz commander, to report that he and his crewmates were ready to proceed to the launch pad. You'll see in a moment that the trio boarded their bus. That was about at 4.20 a.m. Central Time. 2.20 p.m. in Baikonur for the ride to Launch Site 31, a trip that took about an hour to complete. Best of luck to everyone. Chanting Belarus. Goodbye and see you soon. Everything's going to be great. Have a safe and joyful flight. And here is uh, the bus with the prime crew of Novitsky, Dyson, and Vasilevskaya arriving at uh, Pad uh, 6 at Site 31 at the Cosmodrome. You'll see in a moment that the crew climbed a few stairs and waved goodbye to well-wishers and photographers at the pad, after which they entered the elevator for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket to enter their spacecraft, which they have now been aboard for the past two hours.
And you see Tracy Dyson accompanied there by Ken Bowersox, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations. There's the crew climbing the stairs. Don't get too lonely up there. And we are back uh, live with the countdown clocks ticking backward now at T-minus 13 minutes and counting. Novitsky just reported back from uh, inside the Soyuz that uh, the crew is feeling great and ready for launch. At the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying over southwestern Kazakhstan at an altitude of about 262 statute miles. The station will pass over the Baikonur Cosmodrome 36 seconds after Soyuz lifts off and will leapfrog past the Soyuz as Novitsky, Vasilevskaya, and Dyson climb to their preliminary orbit. Eight minutes and 46 seconds after launch, the third stage engine of the Soyuz booster will shut down and the Soyuz will separate from its launch vehicle in its preliminary orbit, deploying its solar rays and its navigational antennas. At that point, the three Soyuz crew members will trail the space station by 1,740 miles, and the chase will begin. This will result in docking to the Prashal node module later today on the Earth-facing side of the station's Russian segment at 11.39 a.m. Central Time, 12.39 p.m. Eastern Time. At the launch site on the steppe of Kazakhstan, NASA officials are on hand to watch the beginning of the journey for Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya. Leading the NASA delegation on hand for today's launch is NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free. NASA's Associate Administrator Jim uh, for Space Operations, Ken Bowersox, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director Steve Kerner, Norm Knight, Johnson Space Center's Director of Flight Operations, and NASA's chief astronaut, Joe Acaba. And with them in Baikonur is NASA Public Affairs Officer Leah Cheshire, who filed this report a short time ago. Hi, Rob. We're here at the launch viewing site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. It's sand as far as the eye can see, except for the star of the show tonight, which is the Soyuz rocket atop Pad 31, just about two miles away from us. This evening, we're hitting temperatures around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, along with some winds, but nothing stopping teams from being ready to launch. It was sunny skies for the NASA delegation on the Roscosmos Charter when we arrived in Baikonur on Sunday. And then rocket rollout on Tuesday was chilly, with temperatures hovering around the freezing point. Rollout was smooth sailing starting at 7.30 a.m. local time. Now the crew are all suited up and seated inside the capsule. NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson is no stranger to launch, with this being her third space flight. And Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky is also well prepared for his fourth. And as we know, it's the first launch of space flight participant Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus. Some of Tracy Dyson's family is here supporting and cheering her on, and the NASA group can't wait to see her on the space station. So we are looking forward to liftoff and seeing Soyuz take to the skies. And with that, I will send it back to you, Rob. 
Thank you, Leah. We're at the T-minus 9-minute, 35-second mark. Launch readiness has been confirmed. The crew has been told to close their visors. Helmets are now closed. Everything is in readiness. all three crew members. At about the T-minus 7-minute mark into the countdown, uh, the Soyuz booster will be declared ready for launch. Telemetry will be received from the rocket indicating that all primary and backup systems are set to support liftoff. Again, you're hearing music being piped up to the crew as we are inside T-minus nine minutes and counting. Again, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be over south uh, Western Kazakhstan and will pass directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome 36 seconds after launch. The uh, launch is precisely timed for the moment when the Earth's rotation will place the Baikonur Cosmodrome into the plane or corridor of the orbit of the space station, which is inclined to 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. And a view of Tracy Dyson inside uh, the descent module of the uh, Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft. Adjusting her straps, getting ready for launch less than eight minutes from now, about to embark on the third mission of her career to the International Space Station. Again, Dyson first flew on the Space Shuttle Endeavour in 2007 on an assembly mission to the station. And then uh, three years later in 2010, as part of the Expedition 23 and 24 crews, now she'll be part of Expedition 70 and 71. Suspect 16-3, one minute readiness, everything is on schedule, control is on board. Uh, the launch uh, will be broadcasted, copy all, and everything is okay on board. We are ready for launch. You heard the report uh, from the blockhouse in Baikonur to Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky as we are inside seven minutes now till launch. All is in good shape. No issues being reported from the blockhouse in Baikonur. It is solid overcast at the launch site, so we likely will not see the rocket for very long off the pad, but we hope uh, to receive interior views of the crew at least for the first couple of minutes before the cameras will switch to a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz booster for the climb uphill. And uh, from another camera inside the descent module, you see Oleg Novitsky on the left and Marina Vasilevskaya on the right as they uh, continue uh, to move through their procedures in the final minutes of the countdown. We're inside six minutes now till launch. At this point, the launch key has been inserted in the launch bunker. This is a real key that transitions an automated launch sequence for the remaining minutes of the countdown. Coming up on the T-minus five-minute mark. Again, this is one of two launches today to the International Space Station. Standing uh, in the wings, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket at Pad 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, ready to launch at 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time on a commercial resupply mission to deliver some three tons of supplies and science to the International Outpost, its arrival scheduled for Saturday morning. 
The uh, Launch Control Center at the Blockhouse reports that the range is clear. Soyuz is ready to begin its journey. In about 20 seconds, uh, we'll begin the uh, purging of the fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines with nitrogen that fireproofs them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Aboard the International Space Station, the crew has been informed by Mission Control here in Houston uh, that everything is go for launch three and a half minutes from now. The new uh, crew members to arrive at the station just a few hours from now will be uh, standing by for the arrival of the Soyuz with an expected docking at 11.39 a.m. Central Time, 12.39 p.m. Eastern Time. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds. The booster's fuel tanks are now being pressurized for flight. This will optimize the flow of fuel, helping to add structural support for the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Oxidizer fuel drain confirmed. Copy your report to Department 1. Booster propellant tank pressurization is initiated. Confirmed. Coming up on the T-minus two-minute mark. T-minus two minutes and counting. We have accepted the report, Department 1. A few seconds from now, the ground propellant feed will be terminated and the Soyuz will go on internal power. T minus 90 seconds. Thank <laughs> you. 
depending on the nature of the abort, uh, the next opportunity would not be until Saturday for a launch for the Soyuz, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Once again, the countdown was proceeding flawlessly until about the T-minus 22nd mark. And for reasons yet to be determined, the automatic uh, abort w was issued to stop the countdown. Soyuz had a 10-second window in which to get off the pad, so there will be no launch of Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya today. With the Soyuz launch having been aborted, we'll be standing by also for further word on what impact, if any, this might have on the uh, Falcon 9 launch of the commercial resupply mission later today of the SpaceX Dragon. To recap, uh, the launch of Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya on Soyuz MS-25 has been aborted. The abort command, which is an automatic command, uh, was issued at about the T-minus 20-second mark. Everything in the countdown has proceeded normally. The crew is perfectly safe atop the Soyuz. The uh, fueling and replenish uh, process has been uh, terminated for the day while engineers in Baikonur will assess uh, a potential reason for today's abort and a forward path. Fifth to the fiftieth, ready to activate system. Go ahead for station. Hey Matt, you got Costa here. We want to give you guys a status. Um, our Soyuz launch was commanded, aborted about T minus twenty seconds. Uh, crew safe, everyone safe on the pad. We're standing by for more info, and we'll get you what we have when we have it. So as you guys know, that means it's going to be a few days before you guys see some visitors up there. Copies reported. Most importantly, station copies. Crew are safe. This is Mission Control Houston. To recap, 
Today's launch of Soyuz MS-25 was aborted at about the T-minus 20-second mark. The retraction of the second umbilical buttressed up along the side of the Soyuz 2.1A booster occurred, but there was no initiation of the engine sequence start that is typically expected at that point, and the automatic command to abort the countdown was issued, stopping today's launch. There are engineers already at the launch pad to assess uh, what may have triggered uh, today's abort. It is not known yet what the cause was. The crew is safe on top of the Soyuz vehicle. Work uh, will begin to uh, get that crew back out of the uh, Soyuz and back to their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters a short time from now. The next opportunity, pending a resolution of what uh, forced the abort today, would be Saturday morning, but it is not known whether or not uh, the issue that caused today's abort would permit a launch quite that early. We're going to just stand by and wait to see what uh, the engineers at Baikonur and uh, Roscosmos determine. If they are able to launch Saturday morning, it would put docking to the space station on Monday morning. To the 60th, deactivate the SAS Soyuz launch escape system. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. As you can see, uh, continuing to receive uh, video from the launch pad uh, 6, Site 31. Launch escape system has been deactivated. Copy your report. Ready to activate system inaudible. Copy your report. Once again, you're hearing uh, communications between uh, the blockhouse in Baikonur and the crew in the descent module atop the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Today's launch to the International Space Station was aborted at the T minus 20 second mark. Copy, this is in work. An automatic abort command after the second of the two umbilicals, uh, which are basically service towers up against the side of the Soyuz rocket. The second of those two umbilicals, uh, once retracted, initiates a uh, engine sequence start. That never occurred. We do not know the reason why at this point. The crew on board the International Space Station was informed by Mission Control a short time ago that the launch had been aborted. So no visitors to the International Space Station today in the next opportunity to launch pending a resolution of what happened today would be Saturday morning. And we don't know the impact yet on whether or not uh, this will have any impact on the launch of CRS-30, the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch of the resupply mission to the station that is scheduled for this afternoon from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station with a docking to the station scheduled for Saturday morning.
to department ton pull out the servicing cabin from the launch table shelter and also lift back up the servicing towers copy both lifting up the servicing towers the uh, service towers of uh, those two gantry arms uh, that you see uh, lying horizontal on either side of the Soyuz booster uh, will be raised again that will permit uh, engineers to have access to the crew to begin the process of extracting them and uh, getting them back to their crew quarters while we await further information on what may have caused today's launch abort. Again, the crew is perfectly safe. Uh, the vehicle is safe. Uh, all uh, fueling operations have ceased. All safety uh, commands uh, have been provided on board the rocket, so there's no danger to the crew. They're perfectly safe as uh, work uh, will begin shortly to extract the crew from the Soyuz uh, MS-25 spacecraft. No launch today, no arrival at the space station, the next earliest opportunity pending a resolution of what might have triggered today's launch aboard would be Saturday morning. And uh, as we approach sunset of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, the gantry arms are beginning to be raised following today's abort that occurred just 20 seconds before liftoff as we stand by for more information from the launch site on what might have caused uh, today's launch postponement. So once again, the uh, gantry arms are being raised uh, to be uh, enveloping uh, the Soyuz MS-25, which is currently venting uh, liquid oxygen out of its fuel tanks. The crew is safe on board. The abort occurring at the T minus 20 second mark. We will await uh, official word. The preliminary word is that the uh, Falcon 9 launch of the CRS-30 resupply mission to the station uh, will likely proceed as planned today with a docking scheduled on Saturday morning to the International Space Station. Well, then uh, SAS launch escape system is off. Uh, may we now uh, open our visors once the towers are in place. Only then you will be able to do that. Okay, copy.
This is Mission Control Houston. With the crew safe uh, aboard uh, the Soyuz MS-25, uh, you continue to watch uh, the gantry arms being folded around the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster. Just to recap, the launch of uh, Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya to the International Space Station today was aborted at the T-minus 22nd mark. No reason has yet been given for the abort, so we will have to wait and see uh, what information uh, is provided to us later today from Roscosmos and from Energia engineers, both in Baikonur and at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. For now, we're going to uh, wrap up our coverage of uh, what had hoped to have been the launch of uh, Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya to the station. And again, uh, we'll provide additional information on uh, the web at nasa.gov slash station and on the space station blog as soon as that information is available. For now, the crew is safe on board Soyuz MS-25. Work will now begin to extract the crew from the spacecraft and get them back to their crew quarters at the Cosmonaut Hotel. For now, this is Mission Control Houston. Thank you.